The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to this episode of Real Agriculture's Canola School. I'm Kara Oosterhuis. Today we have with us Autumn Barnes, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. She's here to tell us a bit about flea beetles in your canola crop. Yeah, you bet. So um, today is May 23rd. This uh, this field was seeded on May 5th. So the crop's just starting to come up. It's about cotyledon stage. And we're going to take a look through it and, and see what we can find for flea beetles. So what we're going to be looking for um, is little pock marks on the cotyledons and if there's any true leaves uh, on those. We'll also be looking at the stems and underneath the cotyledons um, because that is an area where they can feed. And, and it has been a little bit cool here the past week or so. And so... Um, um, in cooler weather, flea beetles, because they're cold-blooded, their muscles don't really work as well in the cold. And so they'll tend to kind of fall onto the soil or hide in cracks. And sometimes they'll feed actually underground, crazily enough, um, but on the, on the stems and the undersides of the leaves when it's a little bit cooler. So we'll make sure to check there. Today it's a beautiful warm sunny day, so we might see some flea beetles hopping around um, or feeding on leaves. But it's really important when we're when we're scouting for flea beetles and we're assessing damage that we don't we don't use the presence or absence of the beetle itself as a, as a way to decide if we're in trouble or not. What we're looking for is the damage and if that little canola plant is growing actively and is going to be able to grow past that damage. Um, and so if it looks like the canola plants are really suffering, if we have more than 25% damage and it looks like um, they're just, you know, we're still at a cotyledon stage and, and, this, and a field or maybe a part of the field like the headlands is, um, is really infested with them, um, not seeing them is not necessarily going to mean we don't spray because they can be hard to find. And, you know, I said it's warm. There's a bit of a breeze picking up and flea beetles actually don't really like the wind. They're a tiny little insect. They can get blown around by it. Um, so, so if it's windy and generally windier than today because it's not that windy, but if it is windy, then that's another reason you might not find them. Can you tell me a bit about what damage actually looks like on the cotyledons? Sure. So usually it looks like a little pockmark, kind of like a divot on a golf ball. Um, and and so they can take, they take little bites because they're tiny little beetles, right? They take little bites. And if, if there's a lot of them feeding really voraciously, then the pockmarks will get big. Um, sometimes the pockmarks will kind of dry out and turn brown. Um, but if they're fresh bites, they'll kind of sometimes be a bit of a darker green. And fun fact that I just learned about flea beetles recently is when they, when they chew on canola, um, the canola produces a compound, basically um, kind of like a, a stress thing, you know, it gets chewed on. And because flea beetles are, um, they're, they're specific predators, right? Like they're, 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 um, they're specialist predators, right? They want to feed on canola and brassicas. So they can actually sense that and they'll come more. So if you have a bunch of, cano a bunch of flea beetles that are emerging from, um, you know, maybe a tree line or something where they've overwintered, and then there's, um, there's some, can uh, some canola there and, and flea beetles are feeding on it, they'll actually realize that there's some good food there being eaten and they'll, they'll cluster to it. So that's why we'll actually sometimes see, um, you know, flea beetles with a lot more pressure on the headlands or kind of near tree lines and things like that because they're coming out of where they've overwintered and then they, they kind of all come to the party, I guess, to start eating. So. And do you usually see them throughout the year or do you only see them at springtime? Yeah, so the good, good question. So they overwinter, they come out as, so they overwinter as adults. They, they come out of where they've overwintered. They feed generally around middle to end of June is when they die. Um, those adults start to die. And then at the end of the summer, the next generation starts feeding as well. The, the next generation um, in, the, in the fall, they're going to be feeding on more mature plants and the damage isn't really that big of a deal, I guess. Like if, if there were a lot of pressure on some green canola pods, maybe you would have a little bit of shelling as a result, but I have not heard of any spraying going on as a result. So, so how much does flea beetle damage actually impact the final yield of the crop? Yeah, it can impact them quite a bit. And so that's where our thresholds are based on. So we have an we have what's called an action threshold of 25% leaf area loss. And so um, at 25% leaf area loss, we're not seeing a yield 
a yield penalty for that flea beetle penal or flea beetle feeding. But when you get up to that 50% leaf area loss, that's what the economic threshold is. That's when the cost of the spray um, is getting paid for by by your application. The reason that we talk about that 25% and 50% uh, thresholds is that we can move very quickly between 25 to 50%. So if you're at 25%, getting close to 25%, you should probably start lining up where you're going to get your chemical from, when you're going to spray, figuring out your logistics, because in really great conditions for flea beetles, um, you know, within a day or two, it can go between that 25 to 50%. So that's kind of why we talk about at 25%, be prepared to spray um, and and get ready and, and go out and, and take care of the problem. Potentially spot spray, potentially just spray the headlands. I know growers who've done that, but do a really good job of figuring out where that problem is. Um, a, another thing is, and, and I'll share some, some photos with you of what 25%, 50% looks like. It often looks a lot worse than you would think it does. So make sure that you're looking at um, Make sure you're really using the resources of the photos that I'll provide or go to canolawatch.org and um, and take a look at what those photos of 25% and 50% leaf area loss looks like because 10% looks really bad sometimes. So Another thing worth mentioning is crop stage. When the crop is at three to four leaf stage, generally it can outgrow the flea beetle pressure. So if you're at two to three leaf stage and it looks like um, and it looks like your crop is, you know, you've got some nice weather in the forecast, you've got some decent rain, your crop is growing really well, it doesn't look like it's that stressed, then you could probably hold off. But, you know, if you're at that cotyledon one leaf stage and that crop just cannot fight through those beetles, or maybe you've got enough beetles that they're actually eating the growth points, maybe you've got a lot of stem feeding, um, then that's going to factor into your spray decision as well. So crop stage is really important. Um, and also checking pretty frequently, like this field we're in right now is has just come out of the ground. It's cotyledon, probably we'll start seeing a few true leaves uh, forming. So if we see some flea beetle feeding today, which we've seen a couple little pock marks around here, but we'll go walk through the field and see if we see some flea beetle fielding, feeding but not at threshold we want to come back and check you know check check as often as you can I think time in the field is is never bad time uh, and there's lots of things that you could you could learn. 